Good evening, good morrow, and good morning, everyone. As you know, at least I hope you know, my name is Mikhail Moonstrung. And what that translates to and what that, what that means is that I make up my own names. Hmm, the voices in my head are plethorable. And as such, I have many, many, many very interesting dialogues with myself. The dialogue in particular that we're delving into today, presuming my psycho-ass cat decides not to kill me, is going to be the tragedy of Christ. Now, for those of you who are... Psycho! God. What we are going to be delving in today is the tragedy of Christ. Now, when I say the tragedy of Christ, I'm not referring to the tragedy which is described in the New Testament of the Bible, and that is of the crucifixion of Christ. No, what I'm referring to is what I believe is a tragic misunderstanding and misinterpretation to biblical texts and to the story that the figure of Yeshua, Jesus, is trying to tell, um, and especially how that has been so deeply fucked up as it's been carried over to our society. Um, all right, so let's, <clears throat> let's break this bad boy down. So, the teachings of Christ, referring to Jesus Christ as coming from the Abrahamic faith, can be very, very similarly or traced back to Eastern philosophy. In some TLDR version, it is think good things, do good things, and say good things. It's simple. Just be a good person. Love your neighbor. Don't don't not love your neighbor. I'm gonna kill this cat. Yeah! Quit it! Now that the cat has been silenced, smacked and smoted, back to topic. Okay. I will kill you. I'm not saying no, I won't kill her. I'm shaking my head in disapproval in case there was a question there. TLDR version is. No, I don't like that. <clears throat> in sum, Jesus. In sum, Jesus' whole message is based around truth, love, and peace. Now. There's some wiggle room in there, especially when you look at the definitions of what these things mean and how you attain them and how you get to them. But inevitably, the character of Christ, I'm going to call him Yeshua, lived an incredible story. And inevitably, how that has survived today has been distorted, twisted, turned, made into a lot of things. It is my opinion and my belief that when you talk about Christ and Jesus in the Bible, the message he was attempting to get across is effectively the same message which has been told time and time again. And that is not of the existence of the perfected form in the physical, but in the intangible, in the comprehensible. See, when we look at Christ and how he's talked about in the Bible, you know, you see this idea that he's perfect. That Jesus is perfect without flaw, without mistake. And don't get me wrong, I love the idea, but I, I, I think it's fucked up. I think it's incredibly hard to live up to. I think it's hard to succeed in. I know that when I look at me, I'm not anywhere close to perfect. So trying to follow in the path of somebody who is perfect is, is very hard. I don't know if any of you are Christian, but uh, it's very hard to follow in the path of somebody who's perfect. Now, a lot of people have a bunch of different ideas, you know, everybody's got opinions about Jesus, and I think Jesus was a man, a human man, a normal man, an accepted person who, you know, who shit, pissed, who had to wipe their ass, trip, stub their toe, probably cursed, who loved, who felt, and I believe that he stood for, and he symbolized, and in his teachings, and in his words, in the lessons that he gave to his family and his friends, those people who were close, it was that perfection exists, but it's not here. It's not now. It's not in the phase that you can comprehend now. It, it's always in front of you. It's always eluding you and evading you. And faith is that every step you make forward is, in fact, taking you closer to the destination, not just upon a, a treadmill. 
So when I say the tragedy of Christ, what I'm referring to is how so many people today believe in Christ as this perfect thing, this perfect person, and that the life he lived was so separated from humanity. And I'm not saying it wasn't. I don't know. I wasn't fucking there. But I know that he's a metaphorical and an allegorical character, that his life has become the subject of much fantasy and much fiction. Now, I know many of you are going to be like, but it's written that there was an account of him in Roman. No, I believe it. there was. I'm not saying that this person wasn't there, that they weren't that. I'm saying that everything that they were made into, maybe that's where some of the story, the parable, the magic is existing versus the actuality. You know, I could look at an example would be the virgin birth. I do not believe, and I think it's erroneous to believe that the virgin birth existed or was created by non-natural means. In other words, that that that, that you could that, that you had a virgin birth at all. Mary got fucked, babies. She did. No, I'm not saying that she wasn't invested and possessed with a spirit that allowed her to to consciously create and wield energies of creation to to create Jesus, to create this figure, this Messiah. But to say that she begot that life without the same natural forms that the very same creator as dictated in this book is said to have made, I don't think that follows our logic. I don't think that follows in suit very well. Ugh. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying it's a bad belief to have. I'm saying that if you continue in your thought process, you continue in your study of science and education and evolution and as well in theology, in study of scripture, study of varying systems of esoteric thought and metaphysical approach, you will find many things. And usually at the base of them, there is this running natural law which gets interpreted as God. And in that space, all things exist. This intelligent design, this intelligent force. Some people see it as that really all benevolent force in the cloud, others as the chaotic, goetic being and deity which sticks together their very reality. And, you know, again, to each their own. The tragedy comes when you perceive and you believe in the end of the story before you've read to you've read all of the chapters which led to that point. Come and get her. Quit it. Got her on the retreat now. Fuck psycho. When you read the story of Christ, there's a huge part of it. You're like you you read about his birth, the beginning, and the end. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you can't do that. It's a great way to figure out like the beginning and the end. But you miss such subtle and crucial context to understand how we got to this point. When you look at the middle, that's the life. That is the life whereby all of the evolution occurs. And you don't see that. It's not written about Christ. It's interpreted. It's assumed. It's left to be filled. And in these spaces... The tragedy of Christ occurs. His message gets lost because people look at the beginning and the end and they don't use common sense to, to figure out what happened in the middle. The tragedy of Christ is he said that this isn't the end. It, in fact, it will continue and go on and on and on again. And in fact, the basis of loving and caring for your neighbor and the people around you emanates from this fact that it will all go on and on and on. And that every day an opportunity you have to be good, to be better, to embrace the loving world, lovingly, you have the opportunity to resist that desire to be counter. You know, the, you know, the desire to be evil, the desire to do terrible things. You can resist and overcome these things by clinging, knowing, and existing in a place of love, in a place of present attention, attention to now. But you don't get to do that by living for a bunch of things that don't matter. When Christ talks about how you live and why you live and you know what's important to hold on to, it's, it's, about, it's about creating meaning. And inevitably, when we build further into this idea of the tragedy of Christ, what I'm talking about is how he said, you know, this, this idea that Christ conquered death and that now that he's done it, we don't have to do it. That he was perfect and so we just put all the shit on his shoulders. And that's really fucked up. Very lazy of us as it goes. You can't put that onto any deity, onto any being. Change has to occur because you want it to, because it's existing and emanating right here. 
And so as change comes from that point within you, we begin to build and, and work our way towards existing within this Christ consciousness, which I believe that this figure of Yeshua embodied in the end of his days. But I believe he had to build to it. He had to get to that point. I don't think he was born as Messiah. I think he chose, rose, and ascended to that point whereby he made many decisions, many actions, but through his commitment to them, his path, and his understanding of purpose, he was able to achieve incredible feats. But you couldn't do that if and until you accomplished them, until you really got it moving the way you wanted it to. If you're living a life which is bound by cultural rule and context that would keep you from seeing and embracing that, well, then that represents what must be corrected. What Christ represented, what he was intending to teach, is that this is not the end, that there is anything and more for you to do, but you must do it, live it, and be it. You cannot stay where you are and be in comfort. You must chase and fight for that which you believe and know. And what you believe and know exists in order. Now, I'm not saying that everything that every person believes and know exists in order. That, 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 that I'm not saying that how you see it dictates how it actually is. No. The idea of God is that there is an ever-present sense of intelligence in all things. And the way that things move across and through that intelligence, this is God. This is what is right. Now, we as individual perceivers of this don't always get it right. We see different aspects, different parts of it. We put different emotional and intellectual influence and twist on it. And, and that becomes the part of journey is figuring out, well, how right was I? How wrong was I? The tragedy of Christ is looking, that, looking at what he idealized and saying that he, because he achieved it, you don't have to. Now, Christ showed you that every individual can rise to the point of being born a man and dying a god. To die, keeper of much and many, wielder of the salvation of generations. This was accomplished because of how he chose to live his life and the power and the impact that he made. And likewise, that is the power and impact that awaits you when you overcome this tragedy, when you realize that you are Christ, that you must rise to this point of becoming the Christ figure. Otherwise, you'll never be able to achieve those miracles, to do those changes, to be that kind of incarnation of God itself, to be the son and daughter of God. You can't do that if you don't get the fuck up and start living that kind of a life. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mikhail Moonstrung. It's been a pleasure as always.